And one of this joint venture is very famous already, um, and it was done before we was existing, it, and we are very delighted to work with them. And Professor Yunus uh, explains this joint venture, or this social business, uh, on the video, and I think the three minutes video explained it much better than I can do with words. We created a joint venture company with Danone. Danone is the food company, which the water company and the yogurt company. You have Danone yogurt, everybody likes. So this is called Grameen Danone Company in Bangladesh. I met the chairman of Danone in a chance meeting. And we were discussing and I suggested to him, why don't we create a Grameen Danone company in Bangladesh? He said, to do what? I said, to produce yogurt. You said, your yogurt is very delicious. <laughs> I said, for a special purpose. We can produce yogurt to address the problem of malnutrition among the children of Bangladesh. We take all the micronutrients which are missing in the children put it in the yogurt and make it very cheap so that the poorest children can afford it and eat it. There are millions and millions of children in Bangladesh who are malnourished. Experts tell us that if a child eats two cups of these yogurts per week and does it over a year, he or she will regain the full health. He said, I agree. He shook hands and he said, I agree. I said, I have not finished yet. I said, it will be a social business. He said, what is a social business? I explained to him, in this business, social business, you can invest, but you cannot take any dividend. You can take all your investment back, recoup all your money, but after you have taken back the last penny, it stops. Company continues to earn profit, but it is not your profit. It's company's profit. Can, company continues to expand and reach out to more children because it is driven by the social objective. He again shook hands as I agree. This time I thought he doesn't understand my English. <laughs> but later on I exchanged emails explaining everything. I said, please confirm if we understand each other. He gladly sent me back as I understood every word of it. Let's go ahead and do it. And we created that company. We are selling that yogurt now in Bangladesh. She gets a batch of supplies from the Grameen Danone factory and then she sells it in the village. We have a special program for beggars. So she might be a member of that group that as a beggar she joined Grameen Bank to take a loan and start the, the business and instead of begging around, now she sells around. So it's a transformation by itself. Doin and doin. This particular job with uh, selling yogurt came in very handy. She knows the families all around the place. Uh, she knows where she can sell this stuff. And people support her because she used to beg. Now she is uh, selling something. So this is good for everybody. If this becomes successful in this cluster of villages, then all we have to do is to repeat this all over Bangladesh. Because as a once if you put it in a business format, then the sky's the limit. You can expand it as many ways as you want, because it, once you get the engine started, it never stops. It runs by its own steam. And that's where the difference between charity and a social business. In charity, when you give the money, it goes away. It never comes back. So charity dollar has only one life. If you use it, it's done. But if you can define this or design this into a social business, then suddenly that social business dollar has endless life because it recycles, it starts moving back and forth again and again. So you touch many more lives and it continues ever and ever. Yeah. 
The Danone case is one case. I would like to give you three more examples or cases what we are doing with big corporations. Before I do so, afterwards I will explain how you start a social business with $100. No, you don't have to be a big corporation, you don't have to be a, a, a already a big organization. We have, but we have nothing against the big corporations. At the moment, at the current situation of the economic uh, society, at least in Germany, I don't know the figures in Singapore, as I told you the last time I was here at 87, so you are much more familiar uh, with the sit current situation here, but I'm very familiar uh, with the situation in Germany, and we are the one of the biggest economic uh, uh, power uh, in Europe and worldwide. And our current situation of the business community is 90% of our society doesn't trust anymore the big corporations. After all what's going on in the 90s, after all the pollution scandals in the 80s, after the financial crashes, after the tax, after the corruptions, what we had with Siemens, with Volkswagen, the trust lost all the trust. But it's so important to have a strong and good economic. Nothing wrong. Totally clear for our sides, we have nothing wrong for the normal business community. Our way is to say we have two kinds of businesses and not be one kind. At the moment, business is used to make money. And if you go back and try to find out where is the original word business is coming from, you would find a big surprise. Because business, the word business, comes from a North Italian area, it's from, the, uh, North, from North Lumbrian, and it's called business. And business was when we are together in October, November, December, taking care about our village, prepare our house for the winter season, prepare our food, and to come over the winter. That was business. So from the very beginning on, business or business or business was there, then we taking care about each other. It was in the 14th century when it was more related to work, and it was in the 17th century, uh, century when the English trader say our trading have to be done business. And then they change it to business and then Adam Smith and you, know, you all know the story of, uh, of what's coming next. Then business was born as it is since 250 years, now one of the most dominant institutes in our society. And a big important part in the economic society. And I give today the title about social business, the counterculture in the economic society. What are the counterculture behind? Today, as we know, business is done to making money for myself. Business is done that I become rich. Business is done to have a maximum of profit. Again, nothing wrong with it. What we observe, it is from the very beginning on, there was something in the business community that nobody from us accept. That's why the state's making clear regulation. That's why we need a good government to always see where is the fair play behind business. From the very beginning on, business was done at the Manchester capitalism in Manchester. I make profit and I accept you end up in a catastrophe. Not every business. There was a major business part, like as a center here, or did normal business, but there was always businesses who accept I become a very, very rich person and I use your child to work for me. The whole Manchester capitalism was built on children work. You know, it starts with cotton, with spindle machines. They used spindle machines and they used spindle fingers and spindle, they not even call it spindle children, spindle fingers. They need spindle fingers to give the fabric, to give this, uh, the, uh, the uh, the, the machine, a clear order. They start with 12 years to work, like uh, this beautiful girl behind me. At this moment, they didn't need any more the body, they need only the fingers behind. 
and they need the fingers to give an orientation. It took us in England 120 years to stop this. 120 years we allowed, it was normal to have children in the fabric. The life expectation was 21 years, 22 years, working seven days, 12 hours a day. I don't know who have children from you already, or this one who can remember when I was 12 years, it's very clear what you normally have to do as a child. Playful, joyful, beans, enjoying your family, enjoying your growing up. And this business community as it is today, there is always, of course, there is a center of business who is normal, who is very important, who gives us a lot of service, but there is the acceptance of many business, I do big money and I put other people in the catastrophe. And at the moment, all businesses are just taking care to make money. And in a good economic society, you have a good government, you have a good business, this is probably the most dominant institute, and you have good citizen. And in every society, you have an enormous social pressing needs. Whatever you can do, you can be, have the best economic power, you can have the best government, you can have the best stuff, but you still will have social pressing needs. It's human, we have, we have problems and we have to solve them. And at the moment, the most efficient and dominant institutions are only one dimensional. It's only there to making money. If you want to do business, you make a choice and you serve and you work in business, you create a business to make money. And the idea from Professor Yunus is now to have a choice. To say, I can do business with all the skills, with all the good technique what business has to solve the problem. And we need these two kinds of business. We need a normal business and we need a social business. And the social business has two aspects. The first aspect is to solve the problem. The second, probably more important, is to give an orientation for the other business people. What is enough? What is enough? How much, money, how much money is enough? How much profit is enough? And uh, so, and as you see today, 99% of the businesses are very, very, very based on the self-centeredness of people, and the social business is a balance in it to try to do it up. I give you three more examples from the big corporations, and then I come back how you can create your own uh, social business. A little bit related on, on the story, what I told you about myself before. And uh, before I go uh, in that this creativity, this is probably the infinity power what we all have. Creativity is nothing who belongs to the man with a colorful shoe and a crazy hat and a scarf, you know? This is just, I had six brothers and I, I marked myself and my mother recognized me, you know? So, <laughs> so it's very normal. It's, so I don't come out of this old habit. So, you know, with six brothers, you, you want to see, hey, hello, here I am. So, uh, that's very clear. So this is nothing to do with creativity. Creativity <laughs> is definitely something what every one of you have in an infinity way. Every mother in this room is extremely creative. You know, when you have a small baby, and when you, we just had one pregnant woman here, you know, in a couple of months when you are having your first baby, this creativity every week, every month, every second month, every five months, every a year, one and a half year, you always have to adapt yourself to the child and you have to find a way. The child will put you in an enormous chaotic situation and you have to find solutions. So creativity is in a daily life, every day. And you have to manage your daily work and you have to manage your family. So day by day we use our incredible power of creativity, an infinity power of creativity. 